So we're here on Tuesday after I've been on holiday last week. So this is the first time I've been able to get down here. Um, some things I knew they would go over. Um, the peas, they look like they've gone a little bit hard. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the broccoli um, is bolted. Uh, yeah, just got a lot of weeding to do. That's what I'm going to do today. It's raining a little bit, but not too bad. Um, I'm going to take the netting off a lot of things and risk it because I think that it's because I've not got proper hoops it's restricting things now and they're getting squashed like the sweet corn needs to be able to get up taller um, yeah I've got some raspberries that I could harvest I couldn't find a container at home so we're just gonna have to eat them here all right Connor you go shall we eat some yeah um, yeah I'm gonna take all the radishes out that are left there I think yeah, anyway, just bits and bobs today. I'm going to empty one of the containers of spuds because um, if you saw one of my previous vlogs, the leaves have gone all yellow and I thought it had just gone too dry um, and I earthed it up but it's completely, there's no leaves showing now so I'm just going to tip that up and see what's, if there's any spuds. I don't think there will be though. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the peas have gone all pale coloured and uh, you know that means they've gone they've gone a bit hard and they're not as tasty and sweet as they would have been when it's all leafy and green. This happened last year. I, we did harvest some though, so yeah. So I'll just save all that for seed for next year, I think. Uh, what else? Those delphiniums are looking absolutely beautiful. One of my worries was that I'd left these to soak in a little bit of water because I thought it would carry on being scorching while we was away and I was worried that they were getting drowned because that has done quite a lot of rain but they seem okay. If I take them out now and let them dry out a little bit, that was dead anyway. That um, that had a rotten year last year because of the change in weather. Oh, I was hoping it would uh, come back, but it's not done. Yeah, these are all sage, they're just spur really. I saw too many. And these strawberries need planting somewhere really. I shouldn't keep buying things that I'm not ready to plant out, should I? So there's the aronia and the loganberry still haven't gone out. Spur cauliflowers are all gone, but I had too many anyway. Yeah. So it's the fall gold. We've got a lot of raspberries that we can um, harvest. Um, we've got a few black currants, but it's looking a bit sparse actually. Not like the red one over there. That's got a lot on it. And the white one's got a lot on it as well. Look at me blueberry, it's not looking well at all. <laughs> that, the, uh, the gooseberries might be ready. I'm not going to harvest everything today though. I've got some lettuce that I need to take home. And the kale, the curly kale. Yeah, I'm going to take all these radishes out. The pumpkins are doing all right. Uh, so it's just that broccoli over there. Um, it was just getting a little head on it just before holiday. Well, there's some little bits I can use, but um, this has totally gone over. Well, bolted, should I say. Oh, I could harvest some turnips. I'm going to have to wait till Saturday, though. There's no way I can carry all this home on the bike. <laughs> oh, my cabbage have got little, little heads, but again, some of them look a bit strange. That one looks all right, though. 
yeah. The broad beans, the pods are looking really big now. I still don't know whether to harvest them or not. So when I was thinking they were big and fat before, they were nowhere near, they were only like half the size. Gives me some flowers are getting bigger. I wouldn't call them giant, but they're at least bigger than two foot like they were last year. Yeah. So I've taken out all those radishes that, that were there and I've weeded it all as well but and I was weeding over here but look at this what's anybody think this is it's like um it's like a tan coloured fungus or something some of it's white but there's bits of it over there white bits uh, no idea, it's strange. It's just in this area. Um, this isn't it. Look at the, remember um, on one of my last hmm, one of my last vlogs, I was on about the fleece that you can get from Wilco's. This is what's happened to it. It's like snow. So I find a good piece. Of, it's all over my lettuce, look. Just looks like ice or something. Surely it's not supposed to be biodegradable. Fleece is something that you want to use again and again, surely. I don't know. It's not good though, is it? Hmm. Anyway, any ideas what that is? Right, this is the tub of tom uh, potatoes I'm going to empty out, so yeah, let's find somewhere to empty it upside down and let's reveal the nothingness that's probably in there. Right, so let's have a look what's happening in this tub of so-called spuds. I'm reckoning there's nothing. Yeah? Not a sausage. Oh. oh. I've got lots of little ones. I should be happy with that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Can use them like... Um, Little baby potatoes. Oh, so it's not a, like a total failure. <laughs> you know? Let's see how many I've got. Let's pick them all out. So at least it wasn't nothing, yeah? Thankful for small mercies. Even that small. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what went on with it. I think it just got too dry um, and just died a bit too much. And at least I can spread this around me um, pumpkins as well, even though the nutrients have gone out of it a bit. Teeny tiny ones too. <laughs> Can I use those for planting next year of a storm, those tiny ones? Are they no good? Are they too tiny? Please uh, put any recommendations for usage of them in the comments below. Or can I store, just store them and they'll... Oh, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Sorry, I'm prattling on. Oh, as well. The onions, some of them. Are getting uh, flowers on um, and the bulb isn't very big at all now these have been in since last year Let's see just two 
teeny tiny in fact do you know what these were onion sets that are planted so really they've not grown at all now I didn't prepare this ground very well um, for them to be honest and I've not prepared it anymore because they're in here so can people vote please should I just pull them out and be done and work the ground a bit more why has it got a swell in here as well very strange see some of them kept getting pulled out of the ground by goodness knows what but that really isn't much bigger than when I planted the onion set I think there's a couple under here as well oh, the netting snapped them but but they were flowering anyway look I need my trowel getting filthy here uh, do you know what I need? a necklace with a trowel on it <laughs> because I do the same at home with my little trowel there I always put it somewhere and I can't find it yeah they're not worth bothering about are they? or shall I let them just flower for the bees? Hmm? Um, again, comment below, advise me on what you think I should do. At this point I'm all for pulling them out but I'm just going to sleep on it I think. Till next time I come. Because I don't need this bit of bed immediately so there's no rush. Well, I'll continue looking for the spuds. I think that's nearly it actually have more little teeny tiny ones I can't remember what variety these are right now I did make a note of it somewhere I think it's on my old phone actually um, I did myself a little diagram um, of what bucket was which unless I've since mixed the buckets up then they could be anything. That's it. Wow. There we go. So I've tried to make sure there's no tiny little spuds uh, in the compost left because I don't want spuds sprouting here next year. Um, yeah. I'll tell you what other crop looks ridiculous. The strawberry spinach, seriously, they're not meant to be that small, are they? That is laughable. <laughs> Look, they're sometimes called strawberry sticks. That can't be it. All that trouble for that. And there's even tinier ones here. Look. <laughs> no. It's the first time I've ever um, sewn them. I think today I need to go over to somebody that I watch. Her channel is called My Rusty Garden. She really cheers me up. Um, Ali on there is so comical the way she expresses herself. Anyway, I'm feeling the need to go and watch one of her videos today and cheer myself up. Um, I've just uncovered the purple sprouting broccoli and it's being attacked by all sorts I'll show you now uh, so I mean it was poking through the net a little bit um, so there's big caterpillars um, there's funny little well, it's got like funny little black flies on it as well oh these are what I was on about on my last vlog or the vlog before that were on my peppers these little tan coloured round things I don't know if it'll focus actually can you see them just on the edge of this leaf here I don't know what they are but they seem to attack it as well uh, right there 
next to Mr. Caterpillar. I'm going to give him an experience now of flying. Eee. And there's this. What is that creature? Eee, there's more. They look like leeches. <laughs> uh, and there's one of those caterpillars that bunches up like that as it's going along. Do you know what I mean? They're only little. I've seen one of them, but I've lost him now. Yeah, so that's quite a few things are attacking this purple spurting broccoli. But the cabbage next to it uh, doesn't look too bad actually. Yeah, it's looking a bit mucky in the middle, some of them. I know the pigeons are going to descend on them, but I felt like I needed to take the netting off, really. Um, I've not got any piping to make some proper hoops or some bed frames or just something. Uh, but I'm hoping by next year I will have a lot of the beds covered by things like that, proper things, and it'll look nice. And It looks nicer already with the netting off. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've just done some more weeding, really. Um, the plan for Saturday when I come is to uh, go along all the edges as much as possible and chop it all back because, unfortunately, I don't have any neighbours to my plot, so I have to look after every single side and, unfortunately, it encroaches really bad, particularly that side where the pond is. I've weeded one more bed before we go and I'm going to sow some this is the asparagus bed as you can see they're only like little young ones um, so I can't harvest any uh, till they're a decent size in a few years um, yeah so I'm going to sow mixed spicy salad uh, in a row here and rocket in a row there I think um, and I've sown some more beetroot over in the beetroot bed near the shed and some billy button flowers um, in the bo flower border over there. I've been meaning to sow these seeds for weeks but with it being so scorching I thought they'd just the soil would be too dry so it's just right now it keeps raining on and off and it's still lovely and warm So we've picked loads of raspberries and there was even a, a rogue strawberry under there. I'd forgotten there's a tub of strawberries um, and they seem to be doing really well actually considering they're in deep shade there. So Connor's going to have a munch on those now. Yeah, I'm going to pinch one now. And actually, I thought I had a yellow and a red here but they've both turned out to be um, fall gold. But I have got... I have got um, red raspberries um, over there, just on the edge of my plot. And I've got loads at home as well. I wish I hadn't bothered putting the netting on the raspberries actually because some of them are growing through the netting. And the birds haven't bothered with them anyway, so... Yeah. With the broccoli I've decided that um, I took the flowering heads off, mainly. I'm going to snip these off. They're still edible when they've got the flowers on, but they don't taste as nice. Um, see, I think I think that one's going to bolt as well. So I'm going to snip them all off. I've already done most of it. Um, I can at least eat these, and hopefully it'll give me some more little ones. It'll sprout some more, um, and I will take some of the turnips home. I think. Yeah, that one's a really nice size, actually. In fact, both of those I'll take. 
Yeah, so these are the snowball turnips and you're supposed to harvest them when they're like a golf ball size so that's bigger than a golf ball but yeah so it's not all bad um, I'm going to take this cauliflower out because those little tan coloured creatures that were on my purple sprout in broccoli and I don't know what they are this cauliflower is doing so badly because it's absolutely covered in them so I'm going to totally take that out I think and lob it Can you see? And it's full of aphids on the back as well. Same day, but I'm at home now. Um, I've decided to plant some of the cucumelons in the floor next to those melons in the greenhouse. You can grow them outside, but they don't do quite as well. Um, I've never had any luck from cucumelons. I've grown them before, but they've never produced anything. So, uh, yeah, I've planted them, three of them here in the floor up to now. So I've just rolled a bit more carpet back. I'm hoping that um, it won't hold back the melons in any way. And I just wanted to show you this guy and this centipede here yeah I've pulled him out he's some kind of centipede now most centipedes are good for your garden because um, they're predators of other bugs but this particular kind apparently um, does nibble roots so the yellow centipedes uh, not good unless my information is uh, duff uh, that I've gathered but check it out yourselves anyway I do believe this is one of the bad guys I planted out some more cucumber market more uh, where those white stock flowers are just behind those as well because I've got loads of cucumber market more now and I, I couldn't think of anywhere else to put them um, yesterday I did cut back that hops so it's looking a bit scruffy at the minute because I reached so far and pulled some down but uh, that'll die back that's up there and I did pull some down and try to guide it across there but there's some dead bits in there and some that's okay but it'll sort itself out it happens every year that um, I was meaning to bring home from the allotment, allotment some of my wire because um, the kiwi there it insists on going towards next doors and it looks like it's heading towards her weather vane and I'll try and wrap around it so I wanted my wire to try and guide it this way and tie it somewhere either there I'll have to tie it to a tree or maybe across the garden this way it's a real thug um, but I don't want to cut it really because the only time I've had flowers on it I didn't get fruit but I had flowers and it's a self fertile one was when we used to have a silver birch up there and it managed to grow to the top the silver birch was as tall as the house and it did get beautiful great big orange flowers on uh, yeah so really I want to leave it but just guide it and the other thing I need to do is totally cut back this St John's wort bush here I don't want it at all but I've tried to kill it but it just won't go it won't die <laughs> um, yeah so yesterday I was feeling a bit overwhelmed with the amount that I've got to sort out that was felt like it was getting away from me and um, plus at the allotment but I've, I feel better now that I've done a lot of weeding at the allotment today um, yeah so and at least that's done so yeah I don't feel too bad even though there's creatures all over me cabbages <laughs> you can't win them all though can you so uh, like I said it is a lot better this year so any successes you've got to celebrate haven't you I think my jungle garden's fast becoming cucumber and tomato land definitely tomato land I've found some more uh, wherever I've put bunny poo I've got tomatoes coming up even in the middle bit over there so I've got 
tomatoes in the greenhouse, tomatoes in pots, tomatoes in that bed, tomatoes in that bed, tomatoes in another great big pot just popping up. They're popping up everywhere. I'm not even that keen on tomatoes. Never mind. So today's Saturday. Um, all I'm going to do today is trim the edges and use my shears to clip all the bramble and things like that. Uh, do some weeding and things. I'm filming in the shed because it's really, really windy today. But look what I've just noticed. Look up there. Don't know. If I don't know if anybody's home. <laughs> I can't see anybody. I don't know if it's just an old one and they've gone. Anyway, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do and I'll just show you where I've got up to when I leave. Um, oh, I did make some uh, discoveries. I did look up the things that were attacking me cabbage, uh, the purple spreading broccoli, sorry. Uh, last time I came up on Tuesday two of the things are good things so I'll show you now if I can find any you might not be able to hear me so I might have to do a voiceover but uh -huh. come on let's go outside everything's looking really well it hasn't been attacked by pigeons I don't know if that's because it's been raining um, yeah but Things don't look like they've been nibbled by the pigeons, so I'm glad I took the netting off. So these things here, remember I, I said I don't know what they are, they're like a tan coloured thing. They are your friend. They are actually um, a parasitic wasp that attacks aphids and it lays its egg inside the aphid and then that uh, eats the aphid from the inside out and this is what you call like um an aphid mummy yeah so sometimes you'll find them where uh the parasitic wasp has hatched out of it it's grown on and it's come out and it might just be an empty shell but yeah so they're your friends now the other thing was like a horrible little leechy thing i'll see if i can find one yeah so here you can see more of the uh parasitic wasp things or the aphid mummies and this leechy thing here that is also a friend as horrible as it looks that is actually the larvae of the hoverfly yeah so when I thought there's loads of things attacking me purple spreading broccoli actually it wasn't all bad I, I do have some caterpillars on see there's another one uh, Let the birds get him. Let's see who wins, birds or caterpillar. I know you should pick them all off. But... See, now I'm not finding any aphids anymore. I'm just finding these uh, tan coloured things. Yeah, so that's good news. See, it's good to find a balance if you do have things that um, are damaging your crops it's good if you get birds or the other things that eat those then coming along so that seems to be happening on my plot yeah it's not like I'm overrun with caterpillars or anything at this point or aphids anymore now that those parasitic parasitic wasps have come they're like a little fly I've actually seen them in the greenhouse and I never thought put the two and two together actually but yeah anyway I'm going to crack on now I've brought my strimmer I'm just going to crack on with all that along the all that along the if I get to it um, as far as I can anyway but I also want to do some on the community areas um, to this, to come into my plot. the salad seeds and the rocket seeds that are sold on Tuesday have come up already so it's only taken them four days I must have put a nasturtium seed there 
I'm a bit worried about the sweet corn because it's so windy. I'm hoping it won't get blown over and snap or anything like that. What can you do? Just leave them to it, really. And this is the worst bit for that I need to weed. My parsnips are under there and the runner beans are all in it. It's just full of what we call sticky bobs or cleavers. Um, there's some comfrey, it looks like the bramble, all sorts. So if I get to it, I'll do that. But I'm going to concentrate on the edges just to make my plot look a bit more tidy. And if I don't keep on top of it, it'll really start encroaching onto my plot. So you, you can probably not see much difference on camera. It doesn't look that much difference in real life actually, uh, because there's so many weeds over there. It just looks blended in. Um, so I've done some on every single side. Um, yeah, so that actually is my boundary over there, where that tree is with the bird box on. I was trying to make a living wall over there, but um, it went to rack and ruin last year. Uh, yeah, so at least the brambles and that are not quite as encroaching as they was before. I used the strimmer a little bit and strimmed the path up there before my battery ran out. So I've not done any weeding yet. I've no idea what time it is. I've no watch. I've not got my phone on, nothing. Um, but my arms are sore, so I feel like I'm done really. I want to go home for a brew. <laughs> I did find this interesting little nest in the brambles. I did check there was nobody in it um, before I cut any of the brambles away. That is the good thing with using clippers. At least you're not going straight in with uh, some power tool and just hacking away, you know. It's a beautiful, beautiful little nest. The hole's really tiny, so I'm, I don't think it's even a wren. I think it's some kind of mouse. I think some kind of field mouse or something like that. I'm going to keep it to show the kids though. And when the summer house is up, they're going to have a little shelf with interesting things they found. So if this wasp nest is empty, uh. if that's what it is, I can get that off and they can have this little nest. If you can hear me, I have made a start on the weeding. Um, I've got all the mouse tail that I can out of this bed. Um, I don't mind weeding mer's tail because as weeds go at least you're not getting stabbed with little thorns. So that's it for this week's vlog. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you to those that have already subscribed and those that haven't please consider it. Um, I do all kinds of things and I cover my garden at home, the allotment, if I do a garden visit anywhere um, I sometimes film, film that. I have separate little projects that I might do video specials on. Um, the only thing I've not filmed for this week week's vlog, because I'll do it as a separate video upload, is about the bonsais. I've been planning my bonsai landscape. It's involved quite a bit of computer work for things that I'm 3D printing off. Um, I've been identifying what plants I'm going to use that I've already got to turn into bonsais. I've bought three new little dwarf conifers. Um, I'll turn those into bonsais as well. Um, I've just been researching um, the use of tuffer and things like that to make um, platforms and rocks and anyway all that kind of stuff but I'll do that as a separate video because there's a lot of um, a lot of things go into that so so I'm rambling again anyway bye see you next time <laughs>